Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Talking Nerdy with Ruff on the 33%. This is episode 5. I slacked off a little last week and didn't release a video, so you'll be getting two today. Um, the first video I'm going to talk about a couple TV shows and a couple movies. I think everybody should watch like all my uh, reviews. The first one is Taboo followed by Glow. Then a uh, futile and stupid gesture and drunk stone brilliant dead the last two's National Lampoon movies uh, documentaries. I'll get into it. Taboo is a TV show from the BBC. It first aired on January seventh, two thousand seventeen. It's got Tom Hardy as the main character. He is his name in the uh, show is James Kazai Delaney, and he's as always with Tom Hardy a complete badass. He, uh, they thought he was dead for a long time. He come back to London from Africa because he'd went to Africa with the East India Trading Company as a part, like he was, oh, he wasn't over a ship, but he was in the command of a ship that was actually selling slaves after the East India Trading Company had said they weren't selling slaves no more. Anyways, his father had died and he's got a sister that's, <clears throat> I believe his half-sister, in the show and she is married she's set to inherit everything because he's dead supposedly and he comes back and just screws all that up and it's also dealing with the kind of a espionage it's set in uh 1814 yeah 1814 and it's that his dad has this piece of land in his uh estate called Nootka, Nootka Sound, I believe is what it's called. And uh, it's going to be an integral part of trade with the Americas. Whoever ends up with it, and up till this point, it had been nothing. It was just this worthless piece of land that he owned, but, you know, he lives in England. And when he bought it, it comes out in the series, which it's like 10 episodes, I think. It's 8 or 10 episodes. But as it, as it, as it comes out, like his... Uh, James' mother was bought with the land. She was an Indian, and she went kind of crazy. They locked her up in a, a mental asylum. And it's it's got a lot of really good, really well written, real fle very well fleshed out characters and storylines in it. And it's one of the you know I always say give give a show two two episodes and you know give a movie thirty four five minutes. The uh, it's it, it, right right from the get go. I was hooked on this. It it was because Tom Hardy is such a good actor. You know, everything he portrays is generally just off the charts. And this is the same way. But there's a TV show with him. And uh, when I first saw it, I was at somebody's house. I can't remember now who. And they were just raving about how great it was. And I watched the first episode. And it was really good. And then as a, I, I couldn't with work at the time. I couldn't always catch episodes like Sons of Anarchy and Game of Thrones. When they come out, I try to catch them up a week later. But those was the two that I had to catch up on, and Taboo was kind of later, so I didn't get to finish it. But as soon as it come out on DVD, I bought it, and it's I rewatch it every once, you know, once or twice a year because it's such a good story. And uh, they're actually, it's been rumored, and it keeps going, you know, keeps going back and forth. But they're supposed to be making a uh, episode, not episode two, a second uh, season of it. So I guess we'll see about that. I'm not sure. I hope they do because it's a really, really great show. I mean, really great. He uh, he 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 starts. He comes back home and he's got some diamonds that he had he had brought back from Africa, and he starts you know parlaying them into like he gets a ship and starts trading and stuff. But the whole time the East India Company, you know, they want this piece of land and they'd worked out a deal with his sister and her husband and they're not going to get it from him he's not going to give it to him so they're it's all kinds of they're trying to kill him there's assassins and stuff it's it's really really good it's a really good show and he's got some really awesome friends they're like those the kind that you just have on tv <laughs> like they're they're wild and crazy but super loyal to him you know never sell him out it's a really good show the next show I'm going to talk about is a Netflix show, and uh, Glow, uh, no, excuse me, Taboo is not on Netflix, it's on Amazon, Prime, and Hulu, I believe, 
it may be on more but I know it's on those two <clears throat> glow is a uh, there's actually there's a documentary about glow too but this is about the TV show and the TV show it's an American comedy web television series created by Liz Flahive Fly, 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 Flyvy I don't know how you say that and Carly Monks the series revolves around fictionalized of the characters and gimmicks of the 1980s syndicated women's professional wrestling circuit, The Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, or Glow, originally created by David McLean. The first season consists of 10 episodes and released via Netflix June 23, 2017. On August 10, 2017, Netflix renewed the series for a second season of 10 episodes, which will premiere June 29. So it's, it's coming up. And uh, it's set in Los Angeles, and the original... The uh, the documentary is a really good watch too, and I will review it in the, in the future because it's it's a real uh, heart heart wrenching documentary. There's a couple of the the character the women who portrayed characters on the show that had have you know really interesting stories, but this is a fictionalized version. It's not it's kind of close to truth. Uh, from my understanding, Glow was the guy David McLean had inherited a bunch of money and was a wrestling fan and he wanted to have a wrestling serious show so he done the gorgeous ladies of wrestling because nobody really done that they had a uh, women wrestling was kind of a uh, it wasn't really taboo but it wasn't a common thing there was women wrestlers but they wasn't as predominant as male wrestlers they was kind of the throwaway show you know get or to get sometimes they do it to sell tickets you just if you watch the documentary on it it explains all of it but this uh set in los angeles 1985 ruth wilder is a struggling actress who additions along with other women in a fledgling professional wrestling promotion called glow she is at odds with glow's director sam sylvia due to her tendency to overreact <clears throat> when ruth's former best friend retired soap actress Debbie Egan arrives at the uh, the ringer confrontation promises to either make or break the show. Allison Bree plays Ruth Wilder and uh, Betty Gilpin, please say that, is Debbie Egan. And they're like best friends. They're going through spinning class, or it's not spinning class, it's the 80s thing where they got the headbands on. Uh, is it maybe aerobics? It's like what a uh, I can't think of his name, Richard, Richard, he's got curly red hair, I'll think of it as soon as I'm done with this video, Richard, anyways, that's what they're doing, they're talking back and forth, and it turns out that Ruth's sleeping with her, with uh, Debbie's husband, and she just, Debbie just had a baby and stuff, and it all, it all comes out, and she's, you know, she's being selfish, she just wanted somebody, she wanted to be with somebody, and which that's bad enough but it all culminates and debbie coming to the ring and co confronting her at this wrestling she finally got this job because she's like a starving actress in la which i'm sure i mean i'm sure it's really hard to do that because you're you know you're trying to present yourself to all these people and you may not be exactly what they want or even kind of what they want and she finally gets this show and this gig and she's beside herself and she keeps the uh, director Sam, I think was his, yeah, Sam Sylvia gave everybody else they've got like names and these backstories and stuff, except her. So she she keeps trying to come up with all these gimmicks and he's like, no, no, no. Then she, then when uh Debbie comes and wrestles, he's like, this is it, you know, you're Russia, she's America, and y'all are gonna fight, and that's that's what they do. But it really messes her up because she's trying. To be something there and now the other girl because she was a former soap opera actress and everybody knows her so she's already got more uh recognition than ruth does and it's a really really cute good show you know they they ca they don't really make up they don't really reconcile but they kind of get to sort of talking a little bit terms and i'm sure that'll be further explored in the second season which i'm really excited about because i watched this was a binge watch show i watched it in just a couple days at after work and it i loved it brian was <laughs> saying how good it was and i was like, uh, i kept skipping it and i was like well, i couldn't find nothing on netflix one night and i just watched the first episode 
and I watched the rest of them as quick as I could because it was so well written and so such a fun fun little show you know it stood up to, it wasn't boring at all there's no real law points it's quick and engaging and it's a really good show and it like I said it's a Netflix exclusive so I mean I think that Netflix is releasing some of their shows on DVD but it's not a it's not like their main go-to they're mostly a streaming site I know some of the Marvel shows got released on DVD but I don't think it, they done real well next is uh, next two is is movies they're uh, a little long, hour and a half, two hours, I think. I think the, the actual documentary is long. The running time for this one is 101 minutes. The name of it's a futile and stupid gesture. So it's an hour, a little over an hour and a half. It's an American biographical comedy film based on Josh Karp's book of the same name, directed by David Wayne, written by Michael Colton and John Abowd. The film stars Will Forte as comedy writer Doug Kinney during the rise and fall of National Lampoon. The film had its world premiere at 2018 Sundance Film Festival on January 24th and was released on Netflix on January 26th. <clears throat> now, I've seen it on Netflix. I didn't, of course, I didn't see it at Sundance. The uh, whole story, and this is another one, it's not exactly what happened. They had to cut a lot of stuff out because there were so many people involved in, the, in what happened at National Lampoon's, and they had to dramatize other things that happened. But most of the big things that are in this movie really did happen some of the littler stuff didn't and some of the stuff that did happen is blown way out of proportion like all movies it's not a direct like this is not exactly how Doug Kenny's life went and you don't you don't I didn't know that going in I didn't know much about it besides it was I forgot the little uh, tagline at Netflix it wasn't long but it was about Doug Kenny who founded National Lampoons, or was half of the founder of uh, National Lampoons. And it's got uh, Will Forte, who I've always liked. And it goes through the rise and fall of National Lampoons. You know, a lot of people don't, and this ties into the next one, because uh, Drunk Stone Brilliant Dad is a documentary that tells the story. And uh, a lot of people don't know, but National Lampoons was originally a magazine then they started doing National Lampoon's Radio Hour once a week, I believe. And a lot of the character or the people, the talent on National Lampoon's Comedy Hour went on to become the primetime players for Saturday Night Live. So Saturday Night Live, I can't think of the guy's name, but he basically <laughs> stole all their talent because he, he could give them more money because he had NBC behind him. <clears throat> and uh, it kind of it left them in a... In a messed up place because these people was nobody when National Lampoons found them, and it didn't kill National Lampoons. National Lampoons was still a uh, a force to be reckoned with in the print world for a while, and they still put out movies. Well, there was I don't know if it was the same people, but there was movies that was coming out when I was graduating high school, and they weren't nearly as as good. It was like uh, the no, I think that's American Pie movie. The Naked Mile is. But it's movies like that. It's like the uh, I can't think of it. I've got I've got some in my room. Anyways, it tells a really good story. It tells about his life, him getting married, uh, the, that relationship falling apart. Meanwhile, his relationship with his business partner is falling apart, and it tells the whole how they met. And it's a, a really great, interesting story to me, and how it. It ended up ending, which is is uh, it's kind of sad, and nobody really knows a hundred percent what happened. But uh, you'll just you'll have to watch it. I don't uh, I don't really want to say that. It's it's one of those you got to kind of watch to to get because it's such a shocking thing to me. And it and, and it's it's the same with uh, Drunk Stone Brilliant Dead. Like it, the end of it. it or the end of uh, his story is it's the same because it's they're both documentary films. Uh, National Lampoon Drunk Stone Brilliant Dead is a 2015 documentary film directed by Douglas Tirola. It's about National Lampoon's magazine, how the magazine and its empire of spinoff changed the course of comedy and humor. Because if it wasn't what I was saying about the uh, primetime players. If it wasn't for National Lampoons, 
the Saturday Night Live, I'm not going to say Saturday Night Live wouldn't exist because that's kind of stupid. It still would have happened, but I don't think it would have happened the same way with the same people. John Belushi and uh, Chevy Chase, those guys came, and uh, I think Gilda Radner, it's got a list down here of them. The original primetime players, they had came from National Lampoons, and that's where the Saturday Night Live guy, and I still can't think of his name, but y'all know who I'm talking about. He's been the Saturday Night Live director forever. He got the idea to put these people in front of a camera because they'd done so good on the radio. And the radio started, there was a fight inside National Lampoons besides this one guy who was writer and another guy who was writer, and they couldn't work together. So they gave the one guy, he's like, okay, you can have National Lampoons radio hour. They gave it to him while the other guy stayed working for the magazine. It was kind of a, to separate them, but they were still growing, and they didn't really have to deal with each other. And it, uh, you know, it worked out. It was a, one of the most tuned into radio series at the time. The uh, <coughs> features new, inter it's got a bunch of interviews with staff members. I mean, a ton. And other notable figures that were fans of the magazine, as well as much never before seen archival material and illustrations from the magazine, many of which have been animated. Shown at 2015 Sundance and the 2015 Tribeca Film Festival in New York City. The premiere was at IFC Center in Greenwich Village, September 25th, 2015. It uh, it's the same way. Now it's it's uh, let's see, it's 93 minutes, and it tells a pretty straightforward story. I know, but I know that it doesn't tell. There's people that's that's uh, not not really cut out, but there was there was uh, stuff that happened that they didn't have time to explore in a documentary that they was trying to sell for that's an hour and a half documentary about National Lampoons because National Lampoons is not the powerhouse that it was at one time. And you gotta keep in mind, you know, if it wasn't for National Lampoons, you wouldn't have Animal House, you wouldn't have Caddyshack, you wouldn't have, well, really Chevy Chase or John Belushi, you know, those two pretty big ones. And uh, it's, a like I said, it's a ton of people they interview and talk to. Uh, Gilda Radner, Gilda Radner was one of the uh, performers, and it was a, it was just a fun time. Like you, you watch these, and especially in the early years before Saturday Night Live it took over, they was just loving their life and enjoying their work and hanging out with their friends and you know always trying to one up each other. And then, uh, you know, Saturday Night Live come and it kind of it put a damper on everything. And the main guy he goes through a couple pretty serious mental breakdowns and you know he loses his his wife and his business partner ends up leaving but they keep the they keep the magazine going for quite a while I, I'm not I'm not sure when they actually quit I think it was in the early 90s that the magazine they quit producing the magazine but that was that's a problem or a uh, it's not really a problem but something that a lot of print magazines had to address in the 90s and 2000s because it was no longer profitable to put out a magazine when you could go online and get the same material. And I know I personally, when I was a teenager, subscribed to a lot of music magazines. I got Alternative Press, I got Spin, I got um, Rolling Stone, Blender. Blender and Spin were two of my favorites. Well, those most of those don't exist no more. I don't know if Alternative Press is still making uh, magazines. I think they had quit for a while, but I do believe they came back again. But I know Spin and Blender is no longer, no longer magazines. And like they came, you know, it was cool stuff that they came with, like CDs that had different new music or stuff that was just done for the only way you could get it is if you had a subscription and you got it, or if you bought it off the newsstand. But you had to buy that magazine, and uh, that was that was part of the transition into the digital age it killed a lot of print media a lot and uh newspapers was really on the teetering point for a while they probably still are because it's so much easier and faster and more economical to just go online and type up you know los angeles news today and it'll you'll get a list of things that have happened from now back however many hours and it's just in print you can just click on it it's a lot easier than buying and 
it cuts out so much the overhead because then you just got a couple people putting it on a computer whereas good lord to make a magazine you've got to have people printing it you've got to have distribute distribution centers and you get that that goes to other places that distribute them it's a lot it's a lot more to it but and both of those movies are extremely i enjoyed them uh the drunk stone brilliant dead is probably not for everybody neither is a futile and stupid gesture i mean er, everybody's not gonna like it i enjoyed them quite a bit but they're uh it depends on your humor and you know kind of the kind of movies you like like everything i mean it's it's not guaranteed for everybody to like everything but i enjoyed both of them a lot and uh taboo and glow i don't there's very few people i see not liking them glow may be a little too campy for some people but taboo is just an excellent show very well written and produced i mean it's just it's great across the board and like i said both i picked those two because there's supposedly supposed to be new seasons for those two coming out so i figured to give you a little primer that maybe you'd go pick it up or watch it streaming somewhere like i said glows on netflix taboo is on uh, amazon prime and hulu i know it may be on some other ones but i know it's on those two and uh maybe you'll go watch them and a new one comes out we can all watch it together you know anyways <coughs> Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, taking time out of your day to watch this. Uh, remember, always like, share, subscribe. I hope everyone's having a great day, and I'll see you soon.